All right, so good morning and thank you all for being here. We hope you enjoy all of the presentations today. I'm Julie. Uh, this is Sarah, Sarah and Kiana. Uh, many women, including us standing up here, um, have at times felt uneasy walking alone at night, feeling unsure of their safety or unsure of their unsureness or just flat out scared. And although walking alone is for many an everyday experience, um, physical assault is relatively rare. Fear and uneasiness are unfortunately all too common. So we asked the question, how can we help women identifying individuals both feel and be safer while walking alone? We started off by conducting a literature review and interviewing experts in these relevant fields. If it wasn't evident before, it became abundantly clear that this problem space is extremely complex. Historical and present realities force women to adopt preventative strategies against harassment and sexual assault, including reducing the amount of time they spend walking alone outside, further perpetuating inequality. And so due to fear being a function of this larger societal issue, we also need to consider solutions beyond the context of the immediate walk. So we set out to better understand the experience of walking. And after two months of user research, including field research, diary studies, and interviews, we uncovered three areas for improvement that would ultimately inform our final solution. First, we learned that our participants often sought out the presence of other people when walking alone, many stating that calling someone helps them to feel safer. At the same time, several of these participants expressed that they don't reach out nearly as often as they would like to, citing reasons like not wanting to worry or inconvenience others. So we realize that there is an opportunity to facilitate easier communication of fear, both during and beyond the walk. We also learned that a major source of unease during the walk is a result of the surrounding physical environment. Over and over again, we heard about low lighting or overgrown areas along our participants' routes that contributed to them feeling unsafe. So how can we give our walkers a way to advocate for issues influencing their surrounding environment? Third, we learned that risk, assessing risks is tricky and it's vague, and participants were often concerned about whether their fears were actually justified, preventing them from acting in the interest of their own safety. They also were not confident in their ability to effectively respond to risks. So clearly then, there's an opportunity here to help our walkers assess and respond to risks. So from all these opportunities, we came up with our solution, Ramble. Ramble is a mobile app that makes walking safe safety a social focus. It is made up of three main components. The first is a walking experience, where walkers are virtually paired with someone else who is also walking alone, who they can communicate feelings of unease to without the embarrassment or concern of burdening them. The second feature is a news feed that provides a channel to share information that would be beneficial to others in your vicinity and can also be used to determine areas that could be improved through environmental design. And the third, Rainbow incorporates safety tips to increase confidence and knowledge in risk assessment and response. And now we're going to show you Rainbow in action. Rainbow uses partnership and community involvement to support women identifying individuals through the fear and danger of walking alone. When you are ready to walk, you use the Rainbow app to get matched with a walking partner. It's all anonymous. Partners don't know each other's names or exact locations, just when they've departed and whether they've reached their destination. Walking alone can sometimes cause fear or discomfort that's hard to identify or put into words. By simply pressing the volume button, you can instantly signal discomfort to your partner, who can signal back to remind you that they are there. These partnerships leverage the power of shared experience to help you feel more confident. And that confidence is important because it actually helps walkers avoid being targeted. If you are a criminal with the intent on attacking somebody, you're going to be looking for the person who doesn't look confident, doesn't look like they can put up a fight, who doesn't look like they're going to have that resistance. Once you get to your destination, Ramble will prompt you to let your partner know that you've arrived safely. Ramble encourages you to share your walking experiences on an interactive news feed. This helps to normalize discussions around the threats that women face while walking alone. Relevant safety tips provide memorable tools for identifying and avoiding threats in the future. Ramble prompts you to share with members of your community to give each other a heads up about any nearby concerns. 
This provides a safe outlet for expression, but also a mechanism to collect qualitative data that can inform city planners on what needs to be changed and where. The qualitative data that we need is we need to talk to people, a lot of people. So if there was something out there collecting that data, and I could see the change in people's um, experience on the site, it would be incredibly valuable. By making walking safety a social focus, Ramble helps make the world a safer and more accessible place for everyone. So Ramble is composed of three main components, the first of which is the walking experience. Uh, Ramble connects people by proximity. However, it's important to note that walkers are anonymous and never share their actual location with, you, with each other, thereby reducing the potential for predators to use this information for harmful purposes. As you saw in our video, Ramble provides an outlet for expressing feelings of unease through nonverbal vibration patterns with your walking partner by pressing the volume button on your phone. Your partner can provide you with a sense of comfort by reciprocating this button press. We created a prototype to simulate real feelings of unease during a walk to determine whether or not reaching out to another individual would be comforting. We found that when given the option to choose between communicating with their partner via haptic feedback or not, they overwhelmingly preferred being able to reach out to their partner when they felt uneasy. Pressing the volume button has additional benefits beyond communicating unease. The button press also captures the GPS coordinates of the location where the user felt uneasy. A rapid multi-press can dial 911 and provide your GPS location to the dispatcher. Additionally, walkers can customize other escalation preferences, such as setting emergency contacts. By prompting users to describe features of the built environment that made them feel uneasy, we can aggregate information and provide it to the organizations who are capable of changing the space in order to improve pedestrian safety. Content in the app is intended to provide walkers with actionable information and get them talking about it. This includes the news feed, which contains user-generated reports about nearby incidents, which are prioritized by recency and upvotes, and are featured alongside safety tips and other content intended to increase engagement. In concept prototyping, we showed participants four different types of posts, varying in tone, in an effort to determine what type of content they would be interested in seeing. Our participants widely preferred posts containing actionable information over ones that were solely emotional, because they saw the former category as an opportunity to make informed choices for future walks. Tips are related to recent local report data or how our user answers a poll. And they also make up their own searchable page. Finally, tips provided before a walk can help remind a walker to be aware of her surroundings and practice defensible behaviors. From our interactive prototype and a discussion with our subject matter expert, we found that combining local information with relevant safety tips creates the right tone for an application that aims to make an individual's experience part of a broader community conversation. We want to remind you of this quote that we started with. Uh, where feeling unsafe while walking alone was experienced as an individual problem. In contrast, here are some words from one of our participants who was able to test our Ramble prototype, saying, this is a collaborative effort, not a self-effort. So through education and allyship, Ramble supports the individual while tackling walking safety as a society. We finally want to just thank um, our sponsor at REI, Tommy Arino, and our many subject matter experts, including Terry Nelson Zagar and Galen Perrin, who were so instrumental in um, contributing to our understanding of the problem and its solutions. So we'd love to take your questions.